Joining us now is Democratic Senator Robert Menendez of New Jersey. He's a member of the Senate Energy and Natural Resources Committee, where those oil executives testified today. Senator Menendez, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Good to be with you. Watching these hearings on TV, it certainly seemed like these executives were just shifting the blame back and forth. Is that how it seemed to you in the room? Well, absolutely. I, I said in uh, my first line of questioning that I can see we have the liability circle working already, uh, and no one wants to be responsible, which is why my legislation to raise the individual liability from $75 million to $10 billion uh, is essential so that they can't run away. Uh, individually or collectively uh, from their responsibility uh, to the fishermen, to the shrimp fishermen, to the commercial fishermen, to the coastal communities, to the estuaries that are going to be harmed. Uh, that's why we need to do this, because as they play the blame game, we want to make sure that people are made whole. Well, I explain that. So if you raise the cap uh, through this legislation, the idea is that there's so much liability to go around, we can kind of spread it to all the parties. Is that, is that the the idea? Well, right now, for example, BP has only a $75 million liability. Uh, that's beyond the clean, of course. They'll have to clean up. But when commercial fishermen are harmed, when shrimp fishermen are harmed, when seafood uh, processing plants are harmed, when those coastal communities lose uh, tourism, and on and on and on, their liability is $75 million. Uh, that's ridiculous. So we want to raise that to $10 billion. And considering that BP made $5.6 billion in profits, not proceeds, profits, in the first three months of this year alone, I think they can afford to pay it. Given everything you did here today and, and with all the kind of blame shifting that was going on, were you able to discern who actually is most responsible at this point? I mean, of the three parties you had in front of you, is, is, there, a, uh, is there a clear villain here? Well, I don't think we were able to deduce that today, and we're certainly going to need, once the cleanup, once the, the oil spill is contained uh, and the cleanup goes on, and then we're going to have to have an, a, a full investigation. But it seems to me, personally, uh, that there is plenty of liability across the entire spectrum of that table. And it also seems to me uh, that we have to question our federal inspection standards uh, as to how it is that the blowout protector, which was supposed to stop this all from happening, and had about a dozen different safeguards, none of which worked, uh, ultimately could possibly be in a situation in which none of them could work. How were they tested under what standards to make sure that that would have never been possible. So I think there's plenty to go around here. But above all, uh, I just don't want, while BP ch chases Transocean, which chases Halliburton, for uh, the people in the Gulf region uh, to have to wait. That's why raising the liability standards would make those people whole right away, instead of what we saw in Exxon Valdez, where people had to wait 20 years. Many of them got nothing because they just fell off uh, you know, the process, the legal process along the way. I don't want to see that happen here. And it's also a lesson to these companies that they're going to have to really uh, rein in the essence of what they're doing. And it makes us think twice about dr drilling offshore. I, hopefully, I hope we understand there's no such thing as too safe uh, not to fail. You know, you, you, you mentioned offshore drilling, and obviously the White House made quite a bit out of coming out in support of offshore drilling, and the timing of this uh, has, has happened just in the wake of that announcement. Do you think this is an embarrassment for the administration that seemed to stake a lot of political capital on opening up uh, uh, the oceans for, for drilling? Well, I think the administration made a huge mistake here. Uh, as someone who represents the state of New Jersey and knows a lot of my colleagues along the coastal states, uh, we have uh, multi-billion dollar econ economies built on tourism, uh, fishing industries. New Jersey has a $50 billion uh, commercial tourism and fishing industry. We could not afford a spill like this on the beaches of New Jersey and what it would mean to our economy and our habitat for over a generation. Uh, and after all, the Energy Information Administration, the federal entity that tells us if we were going to ha go ahead and open both the East Coast, the West Coast, all of the Gulf and the, and the, the uh, Alaska uh, shorelines, we would end up having 3 percent of the world's oil, even though we ultimately consume 25 percent of the world's oil in an international market. Even the oil that we create doesn't stay here necessarily domestically. It goes into a world market. So the bottom line is we can keep chasing. Uh, 
after a 19th century you know, fossil fuel that creates global warming problems, or we can begin to trans, you know, transfer our energy needs to new renewable energy sources. This should be a wake-up call to accelerate that process. Democratic Senator Robert Menendez in New Jersey, thank you so much for your time tonight. Thank you.